Hey, hey guys, guys Crypto, Crypto Keys, Keys here. here. So I'll, I'll link, leave some links, links in the description for you to do your own research and look into what I'm talking about. I'm just, just going to go over some of the news at the conference, uh, some people's opinions and uh, judgments of the conference. So if you did not see it, this will help you get up to date. But first we're going to go over some news um, some news about Ripple um, that contributes to um, the overall picture and this conference some people were disappointed in and we can see that by Ripple's price going down and people selling out of fear um, they were expecting a big announcement but this was uh, assumed, assumed by, by people, people. And, and this is what happens when, when you assume and, and so one of the main reasons Ripple, Ripple had this conference um, right, right here, here is, is to compete with, with its rival Swift Swift, Swift is, is doing a similar thing with payments and Ripple, Ripple has been in the industry for a few years now and so they can't let a new company um, take over what they're planning to do and what they are working towards so they had this conference to uh, to be involved and to not be forgotten and I guess to put some healthy competition and uh, strength with their name in the industry and uh, they don't want too much hype happening without them being around so we see this price chart here uh, where it goes by month so October, October people, people bought up again. again. I, guess I guess this is probably news and announcements when this happened because there's not, not, not much, much else to go on. I was, I was holding Ripple for um, a, a couple, couple years, years now and I kind of forgot about it for a while there. there. I was holding it, uh, it, was it was going down, down in the beginning a lot, lot so, so I sold, sold some off, off and then, then it, I forgot about it again, again and then it went up. up. Uh, I think. think a hundred times, or around a hundred times it went up, but I wasn't holding enough, and, um, and now we're seeing it in the news again. So, a good uh, lesson you can learn from this is hang on to your coins. Just because the price is down, if it's a good, solid company like Ripple, and a good, solid idea, and you know they're, they're working towards things, and you know the price will go up, or you think that, and don't, and don't look, look at the markets. markets. Don't, don't worry about what other people, people are doing and what the price is because uh, uh, lots, lots of times I've sold, sold because, because I've been, been waiting, waiting for the price to go up. Uh, these, these coins have lost any interest from people, people in hype and, and I, I, didn't I didn't know what was going on with them. them. So, so I sold just to be safe. safe. And then, then a week later, a month later, later they, they go up. Exactly, exactly what I was waiting, waiting for happens eventually. Google search results, for instance, show a strong correlation between search volumes and ripple price activity. And so this might be a good tool uh, to use rather than trying to do all the research. Just look at Google search results. So, so search volume jumped, jumped during April to June when Ripple railed from 0 0.007 cents to a record high of 0.458. There's 100% uh, I'm talking about or more. Ripple's rally in mid-August to a high of 0.3127 was accompanied by a jump in search volume. Pattern was repeated in the run-up to the swell event. event. So, so a lot of hype was created, 
and when hype's, hype's created, um, people are disappointed because that hype, hype is not followed, followed through with. with. So, so it's, it's, it's not, not smart to create hype unless, unless you're, you're trying, trying to pump and, and dump. dump. And, and maybe, maybe this is what a lot, lot of people were trying, trying to do before, before the, the conference. conference. So, so what, what is Ripple? Ripple? Ripple is the name of a payment, payment network and the payment, payment protocol which powers it. It, it was, it was developed, developed and released in 2012 by a company with the same name in order to enable secure, secure instant and nearly free global financial transactions. It is built on principles similar to those of Bitcoin. So, so many people consider it a cryptocurrency. However, unlike Bitcoin, the source code of Ripple's technology is owned privately by the company, which means that it cannot be verified by an outsider. Ripple has a very powerful network, network and, and banks, banks across, across the world use it as the basis for their own settlement infrastructure. Um, Ripple XRP has been consistently present in the top five cryptocurrencies by market capitalization for the past several years. I'm not going to read all these articles. I'll just show you some of the headlines. Um, startup Ripple has over 100 clients. As mainstream finance warms, warms to blockchain. And there's, there's another, another headline um, that, that I saw recently, recently that Ripple has um, a, a huge, huge war tra- chest with, with millions of dollars in it. And what uh, that means when I read up about it is that they're giving away something like $300 million worth of Ripple to clients for basically um, helping do, do affiliate marketing. So if these companies spend marketing dollars on helping push Ripple products, they will um, pay, pay them back those dollars. It also incentivizes people that get new clients, they get paid in Ripple um, to, to help get other uh, industry um, leaders. On, on, on board, board and involved. <clears throat> so this, this is Ripple's, Ripple's website, website and their, their news updates. Um, here have a play big part in Ripple's, Ripple's price, price and, and what's, what's going, going on with, with um, people's perceptions of Ripple. Ripple. So, they've, they've launched, launched some offices, um, they have 100 financial institutions, like, like all the major, major banks here in Canada are signed with Ripple, Ripple and they have done trials, trials with Ripple technology. technology. And this, this is the accelerated program. program. Um, Right, right here, here. where it talks, talks about, about their, their affiliates. affiliates. I'll, I'll put all these links, links in the description. And, and recently, recently, they say the rising tide of anticipation builds for 12. 12. <laughs> um, Ripple and the Gates Foundation team, team up to level the economic playing field, field for the poor. And I will um, read a tiny, tiny bit of that article. article. And then and there's Ripple Day 1 of Swell and Day 2 of Swell. swell. Uh, updates, updates and articles, articles they wrote. wrote. So, um, Swell Day One, one a former Fed chair, chair speaks, speaks the practical applications of digital assets, assets blockchain, and more. So, it talks, talks about what was talked about. Uh, you, uh, you can, can read, read this article, article if you're interested, interested. it'll be in the link, link below. And then, and then day two, two, two words, words of wisdom. wisdom. Words, words of wisdom from the inventor of the web and industry leaders discussed which, which blockchain to rule them all. I'll be reading this article probably because I did not, um, I did not catch much of day two. So this is an article um, I've been interested in. Keep seeing it. So many of the world's Poor developing, developing countries, countries uh, nearly two, two, two billion, billion, according to the World Bank, struggle to lift themselves out of poverty. 
And this, and this is something that Bill Gates, Gates has been uh, working hard towards, and, and I don't know if he has any agendas behind it. it. He probably does, does but um, so, so he's, they're, they're working, working with, with Ripple, Ripple to, to, to get, get people probably with banks, banks no banks, um, uh, a, a way, way to transfer, transfer money. money. Delaware, Delaware Judge, Judge, this is a recent one. one. Delaware, Delaware Judge throws, throws out a case against, against blockchain-based payment payment network, network Ripple. Ripple. In an and apparent victory, victory for the blockchain-based blockchain payment network, network Ripple, Ripple, a Delaware judge, judge ruled in favor regarding a recent lawsuit over R3 consortiums, which wish to force the company to make good on a contract to buy a huge volume of Ripple. The news broke via Ripple's Twitter account. Breaking news. R3 blockchain-inspired startup servicing banks Financial institution maintains that Ripple Labs violated a prior purchase agreement for Ripple token between the two companies. So if someone's trying to sue them for Ripple, Ripple won. So Ripple is doing good with regulators, doing good with the courts, doing good with bankers. It is a company owned by the power structure, the current power structure. It runs off the mindset of the current power structure. And, and it, it is does not like, like blockchain, blockchain or it does not, not like, like Bitcoin or uh, decentralization or cryptocurrencies whatsoever. And you, you could tell that, that by the conference. conference. So, so here's um, an article on Coin Journal. Seam Commercial Bank becomes first FI in Thailand to embrace blockchain technology. Um, it's talking about them. Using, using Ripple. Ripple. That's, That's a very recent, recent article. article. MoneyGram, MoneyGram teams up with Earthport to use Ripple tech for, for remittances in Romania. Romania. So, so that's, that's good. good. Ripple, Ripple really needs to work with existing payment um, companies, or else they're, they're just going, going to create their own technology, technology themselves. themselves. So, so uh, I think this is a very, very good, good thing that Ripple, Ripple is working with them. them. Hopefully, Hopefully they, they start, start working, working with companies like Alipay, Paytm, stuff, stuff like that. Because, because if not, these companies could take over the industry. industry. There's another one. New York uh, DFS grants bit license to Ripple XRP for institutional applications. That's uh, the hardest place to get a Bitcoin uh, license. And they got one. There's only, only one, one other person, person that, that got one there, there and that's the Winklevoss Winkle twins that I know of. Here's uh, Reddit um, threads around and after the conference. So let's, let's see what, what people are saying. Um, we apologize, you know, the sound is not working. We're working, working to fix it. it. Disappointed after the Ripple Swell conference. Did, Did I miss a big announcement by Don? By <laughs> there was, was no big announcement, I don't think. Saw this while, while walking, walking home today, and uh, that's what he saw. Someone walking, walking home in Toronto saw the, the Ripple, Ripple Transportation Van. Okay, okay, and uh, have a read. Hold on, hold on tight. tight. Now, now it swells over resources, resources for potential Ripple investors. investors. Can, someone Can someone break down how selling at 29 US dollars? Point twenty nine US dollars makes, makes him an idiot. idiot. I personally would have sold some at its high point three zero, but I was really busy around that time. I should have put a stop order in. in. Uh, but I don't know where you get rid of Ripple. Last time I did that, I regretted it. So uh, Ripple is go good for long term investment. Let's talk about for three years, like Brad says. Uh, Okay, okay, this is pretty, pretty fun. fun. Just, Just some clarification, clarification on why early customers saying they're not looking into Ripple right now is nothing to be concerned of. of. What will set Ripple, Ripple apart from other cryptocurrencies? I believe escrow will happen in time. Something going on with escrow in their wallets, probably. Um... And then we got some good news, daily ripple, discussion thread. Newcomers, please read this article for posting everything you need to know. So um, there's some people angry, but not everybody. But 
you know, you know there's, there's a lot of drama online, and, and cryptocurrency investors are very, very impatient. Very, very, very impatient. And, and it, it comes, comes with, with the, the turf. It's an interesting side, side note, because things, things are moving so fast, and, and all these uh, countries want to get involved. If, if they, they want, want to maintain power and maintain, maintain control, um, they, they have, have to get on board with cryptocurrencies, and they're now realizing that. that. Would they, they rather let citizens make millions, millions or billions off of creating the infrastructure of cryptocurrencies? Or would, would they rather make those billions and make it harder for the average person to create a cryptocurrency or an ICO? And that's what's, what's going to happen. happen. They're going to try to take it over just like they did the current financial system. <laughs> but that's, that's not going to work for very long. And we already know that we have to wait for a lot of the control structure right now to, to fade away and die off, pardon uh, my language, but it's being blunt. Um, and then and once, once young people get into these positions of power, things will change. But until then, they're going to go down, not go down without a fight, and they're going to go down swinging, and they're going to try their hardest to maintain control, and that's why we're seeing countries creating their own cryptocurrencies. Now I'm going to leave you with um, Dre Ventures. He did a great review explaining some of people's comments after the conference and why people were disappointed, what was said, and what wasn't said. What is up guys, Dre Ventures here back with another episode now. I know today a lot of people are frantic about the recent dip in XRP's price. Um, what I do recommend is take a deep breath, sit down and listen to the conference recap. I will give you some um, closing arguments at the end of the video on my thoughts uh, about these main two days. I know tomorrow is going to be a little bit shorter, but we'll kick off the recap with the first panel mentioned the point where they're not disrupting the bank industry they're actually helping transactions happen that wouldn't have without the technology because of, mainly because of times and cost they talked about how a lot of countries like peru is very cash based india is recently has seen a surge in e-wallets brazil is really into the mobile interface and a lot of other countries and how their monetary system their society are used to different things. I know they touched on how Uber had to adapt its platform to receive a lot of cash uh, for the drivers to receive cash because Peru is very cash based. Now, the markets are very diverse and they are offering a means to uh, sort of condense all that, all those things together and them have to worry about all the, the, the macro transactions, but the institution not really have to worry that adopting the blockchain technology. Now, the India markets are evolving and we see how e-wallets are extremely popular nowadays, uh, regulations, especially in cross-border payments. Now, we also heard how regulations are evolving quite fast in the fintech revolution, especially in Europe and India. Now, the good thing is that being in a regulatory sandbox, it helps it evolve. But we can definitely know that regulators are evolving and learning the landscape. More on the compliance aspect of the industry for financial institutions, which a lot of them are heavily investing to be at par or a notch better than banks are with all these compliances as well as regulations. Now they did ask the panel uh, for some advice for fintech entrepreneurs and bankers. They were talking a lot about how a lot of fintech companies are finding it hard to be able to get a lot of students right out of college to their companies to help them evolve just because everyone nowadays wants to be an art entrepreneur and are, are wanting to do their own startup and start their million dollar company from the ground. So one of the one of the advices from from the panelists were fintech entrepreneurs to be willing to partner with big companies because they will be quite surprised about the, the, the space they have to a poor and what they can achieve by partnering instead of going solo. Now, an advice for banks, um, it was that they are not here to compete with them. They actually need them. 
Now, they also wanted to let banks know that the world is much bigger than just Canada, Europe, and that there's a lot of value in other markets that could benefit from these innova innovations by fintech companies. Um, a lot of people oversee these third world countries, like I mentioned uh, in the beginning, that are in need of this fintech revolution and in need of blockchain, and it could really benefit. And there's a lot, a lot that can be done in that sector regarding innovation and widespread scalability. To close off, they got some questions from the public, and one of the questions was about the future. Ten years from now, they wanted a prediction about fintech blockchain payments, and actually about anything they see 10 years in the future regarding this. Now, the first speaker actually said, and I quote, I believe we only scratch the surface of the benefits and use cases we can benefit from using blockchain. I truly believe there will be more of that. It is going to take some time, but it is, it is definitely heading there. End quote. Uh, the second speaker also said, and I quote, there will only be one crypto, only one will come up learning from what Bitcoin did and change the way we do payments. A more adaptive crypto that has learned from what Bitcoin didn't do right. End quote. Now, everyone found this really interesting how, and it, I, I'm not bashing Bitcoin, I'm not saying Bitcoin doesn't have a future, but I definitely uh, do agree with the fact that in 10 years, um, there will be a crypto that has learned from all the cryptocurrencies mistakes. I know they mentioned Bitcoin because it's one of the most popular, but a, a lot of people can learn from others mistakes. So definitely we are at its infant stages. So I think cryptocurrency uh, is, is, like I said, really new and 10 years from now, it will be definitely different. It will be evolved. It will have learned from what it did wrong. Now, another question from the audience was, and I quote, do we see banks and fintech merging or is it just going to be a blur? Because obviously there is uh, a need or a try to make to take over the market, end quote. Now, what the what the panelists responded, if you didn't understand the question, basically they were asking if it's just going to be a blur, if there's going to be clarity, because fintech companies are obviously trying to take over the bank's market. Uh, the answer to this was at some point of time, we need to address that money needs to move in cross-border payments. We need one bank or another to settle payments. So it's heading on the direction where there's a need for merger between both to provide a complete efficient service. And I do agree with this. Um, fintech companies obviously take from a part of the market, but for it to, to for something really efficient to work, you will need both parties uh, eventually. Skipping to the second panel, uh, they spoke a little bit about the experience of the pioneers of Ripple leading the charge, deploying Ripple across the world, and a brief info on how it's being and how it's been going for them. The Santander uh, executive starts uh, by saying that when they started in 2015, back in 2015, they started looking on what the what problems they have and what they wanted to solve with Ripple, and thought that most banks were propose, proposing settlement times of eight days which was great for 2015, but there was a lack of transparency. Um, so they created an inside uh, application to test with their employees and the feedback from the employees that were using the app. They were mainly, uh, let me try to explain myself, they were mainly using the app for critical moments when they needed uh, specialty speed with transaction and payments. And the next question was, they wanted to know if this could actually scale. And after investigating thoroughly, they concluded that it was useful and actually began adopting it and that it could scale uh, in, the, in, the, in a bigger picture. Now, he also mentioned that Santander will roll out a GBP clearing based on RippleNet by the end of the year. Uh, didn't go much into detail with this, but definitely was one of the key highlights in his statements. Now, after this, SEB also commented that the Ripple, the RippleNet was a much cheaper and faster solution for most of the use cases that were around retailers, but decided to focus as well on corporate users that needed faster transaction rates. This was back uh, in 2014. They worked extensively with it to work on blockchain and have been live since May, uh, if I recall. And one of the first payments never went through actually, and they didn't really understand. So they found out there was a bug in their system, but never realized it because payments used to take so long that it took longer for them and they completely went over uh, the bugs so right now there are down they are down to nine second transactions 
So first of all, I want to address the issue for what a lot of people are quite mad about and which is the lack of quote unquote big announcements or mentions of XRP in the conference. Now, I do think the hype, if you want to call it that, could have been handled a little better uh, on the Ripple team's marketing side. I want to read you a comment by one of the users in the community, which I feel can I can link to the community's frustration. The comment says, and I quote, the reason the company exists is because it has a community before it's being adopted by companies. The community is your backbone. You don't want to trade in your old friends trying to make new. They should have kept this conference private, not stream it, and and present a day recap afterwards. There is no point to let non-bankers listen into a live stream panel that addresses banks that are new to the crypto world. All it will create is FUD and panic cells. You give the opportunity to let the competition see everything you do, presenting them with the possibilities of undermining every good aspect of news by highlighting the bad parts, end quote. Now, I do believe the best move would have been to keep this conference private, uh, even though I did enjoy it quite a lot and found it very, very insightful. Now, you have to remember there are a lot of day traders and speculators banking on the big announcements to profit from this. And once they don't hear what they expected to hear, they will start dumping their XRP, triggering sell orders, causing the price to fall, triggering stop losses, and finally creating non-stop fear amongst the community, setting off a chain of events that will be hard to handle, especially for impatient investors. Now, this is exactly what's been happening for the past three days. Now, to conclude on my personal thoughts, as you all may know, I personally do hold XRP and don't plan on selling it anytime soon. Now, I do think this could have been handled better by the Ripple team, but all we can do now is learn from our mistakes. And some key points I wanted to highlight before I leave you guys is that remember, Swell a swell was aimed at banks uh b the purpose of swell was to drive new partner relationships and finally blockchain tech is still at its infancy banks are obviously hesitant to implement a system that they don't know so swell was an in-depth dive to what the goal it's all about it's an in-depth dive to explaining the blockchain explaining the projects explaining how they can benefit from this uh I I don't want you to take your knowledge for granted. Uh, We are still at the birth of a new technology, fintech, blockchain, crypto. It's all just beginning, so be patient. Regardless of the coin or company you support, uh, in my humble opinion, long-term will always succeed. You will always, I'm not saying you're going to get rich with uh, long-term, but I'm saying you're going to do, you're probably going to do better going long-term on a company you actually support now. This is parting ways with me uh, supporting XRP or me supporting any other cryptocurrency. I'm st- I'm now I'm talking to you regardless of what you support. Like I said, um, don't expect to make to become rich uh, the next day. I know it happens a lot. I know there's a lot of ICOs where you could probably buy in and make a quick buck. You could probably day trade and speculate and make a pretty good earning. But if you're planning on investing for the long term, Uh, This is normal. This does happen. Like I said, I'm not going to appraise the Ripple team uh, fully without recognizing that there was some aspects that they could have handled better. Um, Honestly, like I said, I am an XRP holder and I really do believe in the technology. I do believe, like I I know this sounds really repetitive, they could have handled a lot of aspects way better than they did. But all in all, If you do look at the big picture, I honestly found this very insightful. I found it to be a great conference and learned quite a lot. And remember, uh, like one of the the, the mentions I did in in this video was their mistakes are probably going to undermine the amount of great news we've been getting lately. We've gotten great announcements. Uh, If you want to check back in the recap videos and listen carefully,